All right, everybody, welcome to chapter six. Now that we're done analyzing our transactions, we're going to talk about journalizing them and actually recording some of the transactions that are taking place as part of our bookkeeping functions. So the first thing we want to look at is the accounting cycle. So what happens is that when you open a business, transactions take place, right? People come and buy stuff, you need to buy stuff. There are things that take place that changes your cash or your assets throughout the business. What we're going to be going over is how to record those things. So today we're going to talk about steps one through three, about analyzing our source documents, figuring out which accounts are affected, which ones do we debit, which ones do we credit, and then journalizing those transactions, recording them in the original book of entry, which is our general journal. Okay? So step number one, collect. Next, analyze, and then journalize. Those are the three first steps that we're gonna be talking about here in chapter six. Let's talk about source documents. Source documents are simply documents that you get inside of your business that tells you what took place, what transactions took place, okay? I know in our textbooks we have them written out for us. The owner invests or uh, you make a purchase on account. It's not like that in the real world. You have source documents that are on your desk and you read through them and they have all the information that you need in order to go ahead and properly record your transactions, right? Invoices, receipts, memorandums, and check stubs. First one we're gonna look at is an invoice. This is a source document that lists the quantity, description, unit price, and the total cost of items that are shipped to a buyer, okay? So you have sales invoice and you have purchase invoices. Anytime you see an invoice, I want you to think about on account. It, it usually means that either your account's receivable, if you sold something on account, or account's payable, you bought something on account. But an invoice will have all the terms and everything that you need to look up. So it'll have stuff such as the date, it'll tell you the amount, It'll tell you the cost of each of the items, and then finally it'll tell you how long you have to pay back or how long your customer has to pay you back, okay? One thing I want you to try to think about is that typically the invoices that we see in this class, the buyer, the person doing the buyer, is always listed on the bottom, okay? So keep that in mind, the buyer is on the bottom for the invoices that we use in our class. All right, a receipt. That's simply when you receive cash. When a customer comes in and gives you money, they give you cash for something that you sold. So you go into a store now and you buy something, right? The, the, the person who's behind the counter or the register, they give you a receipt. They're actually giving you a copy of their receipt. It shows that they received the money and they're as a courtesy giving you a copy for your own records. But the receipt means that the business is receiving cash. Or they're receiving money, okay? And on the receipt, it'll also tell you the date. It'll tell you where the payment came from and the amount of the payment. It's typically what you'll have on a receipt. A memorandum is just a note. Sometimes you might hear people use the term memo for short. And all it is is when the owner or a manager has a transaction that takes place, but there isn't another source document for it. So they will write a note basically saying, this is what just transpired. And you as the bookkeeper would take that information and record it, okay? So it might be something like the date will be on there. It'll tell you what happened in this in this time, in this instance. It said that they contributed twenty five thousand from their own personal savings into the business. So they made an investment of twenty five thousand into the business. All right, and that's a memorandum. The last one is a check stub. Okay, so if you write out a check, that's an order to the bank to give somebody your money. What happens is you give them the check, but the stub stays inside. It's going to stay inside your checkbook. That is a source document that says who you wrote out the money to. Uh, who you were paying, how much it was, what the previous balances were, those are all recorded in a check stub, okay? And the things that you might find in the check stub is the date, also who it was written out to, the amount of the check, and also what the old balance was. So this is what you started, and then this is minus that amount, and it gives you the new balance of the check, all right? So those are the four we're going to keep an eye on, our invoices, check stubs, memorandums, and our receipts, okay? All right, so now that we got through analyzing and we looked at our source documents, now we actually have to take our transactions and put them into the general journal, all right? So a journal is just a chronological record of a transaction of a business, okay? Journalizing is the process of recording that transaction. So you put them in a journal so that you have a place that you can go back and see what date did it take place, which accounts were affected, for how much, uh, which accounts did I debit, and which accounts did I credit. So that's the part where you're journalizing these transactions that you're analyzing. All right, the general journal is the book of original entry. That's where the first, first stop is. After you have your source document and you figure out which accounts are affected, you would bring it over to the general journal and you would start to record it, all right? So let's look at a transaction I'm gonna show you, give you an example of how to record something in a general journal. So if we just look at the general journal, first we see there's a spot that has the date and then you have these rows here that says the general journal's description, okay? That would be the account titles. 
Next, the post reference. We're not quite worried about that until chapter seven, so we can leave that. But here you see it says debit, and there's a column for debit and credit. There's a column for credit. So all we're doing is listing the account titles and whether or not we debited them or credited them. So let's read the transaction. On September 4th, Zip issued a $3,000 check. It was check number 101 to purchase a computer system. Okay? So the first thing we got to do, like we always do, is we have to analyze. So we know computer was computer equipment was affected, right? We just purchased some new computer equipment. And what did we use to buy it? We used cash and bank, right? So right now we have computer equipment and we have cash and bank as our accounts. This is what we've been doing in the previous chapters. We're analyzing. All right, did computer equipment go up or down? It went up, we just bought some, how much, what's the value? We just bought $3,000 worth of computer equipment. So if computer equipment is an asset and it's going up, we would write the amount on the debit side, 3,000, okay? Now let's go to cash and bank. Cash and bank, did cash and bank increase or decrease? Well, we know if we spent $3,000 to buy computer equipment, our cash decreased $3,000. So if cash and bank is an asset and it's going down, decreasing, we would need to write the amount on the credit side, okay? So here we go. We have all the information that we need. Now it's time to take this information and go ahead and put it in the journal. It's time to journalize. So the first thing we have to do is write the date. So if you see here, the date of this transaction, September 4th, step number one, okay? Step number two is you have to list the debited account first. So in this case, if we look at our T-charts, we see that computer equipment was debited first. So we would list computer equipment as step number two, okay? Now what we have to do is say, all right, computer equipment, was it debited or was it credited? And we know that we debited it over here, so we need to write this amount in the debit column over there. So, step number three, you write the debited value or the debited amount, right? Next, we have to write our credited account. So cash and bank was credited in this example, so we need to put cash and bank up here. Now you can see there's something a little bit different here. What we need to do is we actually need to indent cash and bank. So we have to move it over and start it almost in the middle. And this is just so that our eyes can pick it up when we do it. So make sure you're pushing your credit account over a little bit. And now we have to write the amount in the credit column. Step number five, and we have one more step left and then that's it. All we have to do underneath is we have to write the source document. So which document told us that this transaction took place? It says it was check number 101. So underneath here, you would just write check number 101 and you're done. As you can see here, I accidentally wrote check 102. So the right thing to do in accounting, if you make a mistake, put a line in it and write the correct one in there, check 101. This is it. This is how you take your transaction that you analyze and move it over into the general journal. Six quick steps, date, debited account, debited amount, credited amount, indented, credited amount, and then finally the source document. Credit account, credit amount, and the source document. And guys, that's it for chapter six. All we're doing in chapter six is we're taking the accounts that we analyzed and recording them inside the general journal. The next part, chapter seven, we'll talk about what to do with this information.